Hello and welcome to the You Know How to Live show. My name is Kate Hammer and in just a moment we will have Liz Vaccarillo with us. Liz is editor-in-chief for both Real Simple and Shape magazines. Real Simple is one of the premier brands in women's lifestyle space with a print and digital reach of nearly 21 million. Meanwhile, Shape has been in print for 30 years and continues to be the go-to authoritative voice for active women. Liz previously led many of media's most recognizable brands, including Parents, Prevention, and Reader's Digest. Yep, she's pretty amazing. Wherever you're listening or watching from, I'm so glad that you're tuned in and hanging out. I hope you're ready for my favorite combination of things, hopefully a bit of entertainment, and of course, some takeaways to improve how you work and play and do all the things you do in between. Please take a moment right now to subscribe, follow, leave a comment, or give a five-star review so that we can stay connected. And with that, let's bring in Liz Vaccarillo. Liz, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited to talk with you. I am such a fan. I love that we're still meeting virtually, but we're having a much more inst- intimate conversation than we do on Instagram. I'm the biggest Kate Hammer fan in the world. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. I'm going to just need a moment to get over that. Well, all right. Well, you're taking your moment. Do you remember Kate Hammer being in the, I think this is the August issue of Real Simple. Oh August my goodness. Issue, Kate Hammer, number one tip. Love no. it. We're getting more Kate Hammer in the world. Yeah. I mean, our brands are so, are so like aligned, you know, making life better, making yourself better, making things easier. It just, it feels right. This, this you and me thing. I love that so much. And I totally feel the same way. Absolutely. (laughs) And we're going to dig into that a ton. I have some great questions for you about how Real Simple does exactly that, how you show up for people and how they solve their everyday life troubles. And so let's start just by explaining that. Okay. Liz is both the editor-in-chief at Real Simple and also Shape Magazine. Yes. We imagine this is quite wild. Can you share with us what a typical day looks like for you? Oh, gosh, there is none. In fact, this morning I did a meditation about like finding your best self in your work day. And, and it was it was asking me to think about a typical work day. And I just I absolutely do not have one, which is one of the reasons I love my job. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm happiest when I'm in in a story, in a problem, in a project, in an issue. And I'm thinking through like the magazine-ness of it all. Like, Mm -hmm. is it telling the story? Is the layout working? Whatever. That's when I'm in my zone. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm often writing, I'm often Instagramming, um, just sort of behind the scenes about real simple. Um, I love to work out. So I'm living the shape lifestyle, lots of meetings with, um, the brilliant people who work on shape and real simple and actually create the beautiful, amazing, helpful content in both publications. I mean, I'm just, I'm just like the conductor. They're the geniuses. So, um, I spent a lot of time talking and reading and writing. Yes, actually. I love that. I love that metaphor of a symphony. Yes. You're the conductor, but you have all of these people in front of you who are so talented and working so hard and all in this very synchronous, harmonious way. I love that. So in order to make it all work, do you have any strategies or tools that you use in order to get your most important and critical items done every day? Well, I always try to do the most, once I'm, I sit down for work, I try to do the most um, difficult or distasteful or complicated mm-hmm. thing first. I read somewhere, I think it was in Cosmo magazine, like 400 years ago. Yeah. That, yeah. That like, it creates momentum in your day. Like make the phone call that you're dreading making, yeah. like write the, the, the thing, the email that's like been hanging over you for three days, like just get it out of the way. So in theory, that's what I, I try to do. Um, and I, I feel like that creates pretty good momentum. I find that I'm a morning person and then mm-hmm. an early evening person. And this pandemic has opened up, like, I don't know what I'm going to do when I can't take my 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. nap. Like, <laughs> what is, like my, maybe I should just like have the team, like, like nursery school when we're back to, when we're back to work, I'll be like, okay, this will be quiet time, four to six. You can either go home <laughs> mm-hmm. or I'm going to nap. But like, and then I pick up and I do some, I do work at the end of the day. And that's when I'm, 
I'm best able to focus. So knowing my, I guess, bio rhythms. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this pandemic and, and so many of us working from home has really given us that opportunity to figure out what our, as you say, bio rhythms are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, usually we're, when we're in the office, we're used to having to adhere to a very explicit schedule, but now we're kind of getting a chance to feel that out. Like, yeah. How does it affect my work if I actually do my exercise at lunchtime, for example? Because mm -hmm. maybe when I take my shower, it doesn't matter all that much all of a sudden. Precisely. Mm. Yes, I love that. Okay, so when I think about what Real Simple offers, it's all about solving everyday problems for women who aspire to live well, just um, actively seeking to improve their quality of life, seeking out those resources, those tips, those hacks. So you're producing this stuff month after month after month. How do you and your team of editors continue to find inspiration? Well, right. When Real, when Real Simple started 21 years ago now, um, you know, hacks weren't everywhere. Now, every TikToker, every, you know, right, there's hacks everywhere. So yeah. Um, it's really about being, and this is a little bit where the conductor part comes in, being aware of trends, being aware of subtle shifts in how people are living or managing their money or caring about their beauty or minding their health or mm -hmm. the kind of books they're reading or whatever the subject in Real Simple is, being on top of what's next or how things have changed. And so that way the service can change. Mm -hmm. So you're not just always doing... Um, you know, how to use grains in your dinner. You know, you're thinking about, you know, like grain bowls are hot. So oh, let's, yeah. let's take the, let's take that grain story and make it about grain bowls. So it's, it's different and fresh and modern and useful. So always, and it's tough because real simple covers every area of a woman's life from travel. I said, said them all finances, getting even better work, life balance, um, family, all of it, and food, eating. And so I need to be on top of trends in almost every lifestyle area, which I love. I love research. Mm -hmm. I love data. Um, and I seek I seek that insight and that feedback, not just from the McKinsey reports that are coming out, although I do digest all of that, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The big corporations that are saying, you know, um, forest resorts, are big in travel, right? So I see that, but also really getting into um, looking at comments on social media, what people are saying um, to each other, not just in the real simple world, um, yeah. but what is lighting people's fire apolitically. I'm not talking about politics or anything. I'm talking about, you know, we're a respite from, from all of that. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it really is quite a feat. I mean, especially when I think about the print side, because you're making decisions and trying to tune into what is going to be true eight, nine, 10, maybe even 12 months from now. Exactly. Exactly. So a good example is, and you know, we're not, you know, we're not breaking life life breaking news, like life saving news. So we don't have to worry about that. The, the website does. But, you know, for example, Halloween's a perfect um, example because we have to shoot next year's Halloween this year because there's only 35, 45 days in the year. And people who work on magazines know this, that you uh -huh. can get a real pumpkin. Other <laughs> other times of the year, you have to get the mini fake pumpkins, right? But It's to, not the same. Right. So you have to, every magazine shoots their next Halloween story. Um, and so we were noticing the rise in succulents, right? And and that succulents were trending. And so we decided in knowing that succulents are gonna, aren't going to go anywhere for this October issue to do um, how to make pumpkin and succulent, work with pumpkins and succculents to make centerpieces. Small idea, Ooh. but like thinking ahead um, about yeah. what, we, what we might be able to do. Yeah. I love that. That is... <laughs> So fun. Okay. So yes, you're giving us new ideas. You're helping us solve problems. I, I mean, you said you're not saving lives, but I don't know. I could argue to the contrary. You know, there's a hair cream that uh, was mentioned and I believe it was either your June or July issue that I bought and has changed my life dramatically, oh my I gosh. feel. Well, see, that's See, that's the nuance, Kate. You hit it yeah. up. Thank you. I want to take you. Um, yeah. 
This is, um, we're not saving lives, like making vaccines, right? <laughs> but right, we are changing right. lives. That, I hear this all the time with Real Simple. They say, I read 15 years ago in Real Simple to always keep a pair of reading glasses in next to every chair in my house. And I have done that. And it's, it changed my life. Like life is so much easier because I always have reading glasses wherever I need them. So little things like that were known for those memorable life changing yes. um, hacks. Yes. I love that. I love the idea of how are you going to spend, how is it solving a problem? Yeah. Instead exactly. of just like, Ooh, I see this thing I like, like, does it solve a problem? Does for it solve that's, that's exactly right. And that, life. and that's why you probably love that beauty, that hair cream. Um, yeah. Heather Muir, who's our beauty director and her team, you know, we don't just do a list of beauty products and real simple, we call it genius beauty. So if we mm -hmm. are mentioning a product, it has to serve two purposes um, or really have a, a really big innovation that they've tested and believe in. So that's the yeah. secret sauce for there. And man, like it really smells good too. <laughs> exactly right. These little joys. These. Yeah. Little, I mean, when when I start when I started at Real Simple, one of um, you know our marketing department had just had had posters made called that said breathe, because mm -hmm. when you get to when yeah. you go through Real Simple, when you get to the end, not only will it make your life easier, but even that like the the paper and the the way we design the pages has a yeah. lot of white space. The whole experience is supposed to be calming. So not just time saving. So you have more time to do more things, but really to make your life better, to re be able to relax. So that's what the yeah. whole grand is about, including that hair cream that smells good for you. As far as spending money to save problems, you revealed in a recent fall issue, three things that you like to spend money on cars, pets, and cable TV. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually it was like not spend, I spend too much money on them. Right? Okay, yeah. Overspend or spend a lot. <laughs> Overspend. And it's just part of it is love, like pets. You know what? Like mm -hmm. I have three ferrets, long story, different show. But <laughs> one of them needs adrenal implants. Like I'm about to spend a thousand dollars on a ferret's adrenal implants. Um, but like I do that sort of happily <laughs> because I yeah. love I love the ferret, but like cable. <laughs> <laughs> we spend too much on cable because I just have not, I don't have the mental bandwidth to figure out what I need to subscribe to and like cut the cord and all. It's just too overwhelming. So I just keep adding. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, so there's different reasons I spend too much money and car and, and automobiles is because I am just the worst negotiator on the planet. You mm -hmm. would think that like being big boss lady, I would like be able to negotiate. I've walked into every car I've ever bought or leased every auto um, uh, showroom and walked out either spending sticker or a little more. Like I, I just, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Oh that. yeah. Because then right. they have to add in the custom floor mats. And of what are course. you going to do? Get some generic floor mat? I'm so that convinced. Won't fit, right? I'm so, <laughs> right. Right. The spray that's going to keep robbers away. Like I, yes, for a thousand dollars, put that on the car too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but assuming we can't overspend in every category right. of our lives, what's your advice to other people on choosing the right things to splurge on for them? Yeah. Um, you know what? It I I feel a one trick I always use, whether it's seeing an outfit in the store, on a, a piece of jewelry, on a um in a little uh boutique in Rome, you know. <laughs> I, if something delights me mm -hmm. um, and it's not something I've committed my budget to, mm -hmm. I, I always wait at least 24 hours. I walk away, I shut it down. I, you know, I don't like put a pin in the map so I can find it again. Right. Um, and if 24 hours, 78 hours a week later, I'm still thinking about that sweater or that ring or whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, then it's time to, then it meet that's that meaningful. It's not that impulse purchase. Mm -hmm. So always checking in with yourself about, um, you know, is it going to be worth the, the, the bummer when you get the credit card statement, right? <laughs> Um, can you yeah. afford it or can you not? Um, yeah. so that's, that's, that's a little trick, it, it, but I find that some of life's and we've all, I think, hopefully found this, those of us who've survived the pandemic, 
um, intact, um, so to speak, you know, some of the biggest joys cost nothing. And living a life of gratitude, living a mindful life, like my daily walk with Milo, um, looking at how the leaves are changing every single day, like that to me, that is a completely free, it's mm -hmm. time spent, but it's a free moment of joy. So it's not always things, it's often experiences, connections and all that. And it sounds so woo woo, but it's so true. Um, so tuning into that has been really helpful for me um, in the last maybe 10 years or so. I love that. Actually, that would be a wonderful exercise to do on some afternoon when you're just not feeling great about where you're at. Like write down all of that. How did you say it? Your free joys, your free, yeah. what did you say? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. The free joys, the free yeah. the experiences, the things that are completely free that you see, smell, taste, mm -hmm. um, or feel, uh, and, that cost you nothing that are just in the world around you in your family. And so tuning in, it's, it's living a mindful life or checking in with those mindful moments. Yeah. And you'll find there are dozens of them throughout the day. If you're attuned to them. I love that. I think sometimes when we think about journaling or keeping a gratitude diary or something like there's just so much pressure of, well, well what do I say? And I got to make sure I, you know, talk about the most important things. Like I have to write down family and, but you know, the simple things too. Yeah. I, I also, for many years, have set my phone alarm for 559 and it goes off every day and it's my gratitude alarm. And it's, I literally take 10 seconds. I could be in the middle of a conversation with you mm -hmm. and that alarm will go off. And as I'm shutting it off, I'm, I make myself think for one moment about something I'm grateful for. What a simple trick. Yep. I every love day. that. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. So speaking of mornings and alarms going off. Yeah. I would love to hear about on an ideal day because, you know, things come up, dentist appointments, whatever. On an ideal day, what does your morning routine look like? Oh, okay. So <laughs> yeah. um, it starts with exercise. Oh, you know, I'd say five out of the seven days, I have a commitment with either a walk with somebody or a Peloton, you know, that I, class I love to take, or I have a trainer and I make that first thing in the morning, super, super early. So I literally brush my teeth, put on the shoes and go. And I, this is, I don't know if this is going to, many people can do this because I can barely do this, but I don't have coffee until after the workout or after the walk. Mm -hmm. So like, and I find that the adrenaline of the exercise wakes you up and it's this, it's this reward that's like lingering at the end of my, you know, pushing all those weights or whatever. And I know that I'm going to have coffee in 20 minutes, in 15 minutes. Then yeah. I drive home. If I'm at the, I stop at, um, I take a long way home and I stop at like a, a pond for lack of a better word. And I do a 15 minute meditation. And I just, I am in my car, which is very comfortable. And yeah. I turn on the meditation and I close my eyes and I just, I do it. And then I turn the car back on and I go home. And then I'm usually, by then I'm like 15 minutes late for whatever first meeting I have. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I shower and, and I start, I start the day and try to do, try to before that first meeting in all mm -hmm. seriousness, try to take a step to solve that difficult problem mm. or write that annoying email, like I said earlier in, in our talk. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So for one, I'm just super impressed. That sounds, <laughs> and it sounds delightful. I'm just like, wow, I think I need to do this. I need to drive to a pond and meditate. Um, <laughs> and make where it are my local routine. ponds? Let me right. think this through. <laughs> It sounds so and nice. I realized during the pandemic that my car is mm -hmm. one of the only places where I'm alone and I'm I'm not feeling like I should be dealing with the work email or spending time with my dog, my children or yeah. you know cleaning a dish like so it's making it part of car time mm -hmm. is finally how I worked it into my life. Yeah. You know what? That's so wise because so many things in our lives just act as triggers for what we should be doing. And I love how you're marrying together 
car and meditation, like now when probably whenever you get in your car, you're getting those good feelings, right? Like the more you do this. That's really interesting, Kate. I now that I'm thinking about it, I do. I feel like I'm entering a quiet space, like a me space. Cause yeah. when I take the family it uses the other car. And so this is really my own, you know, I'm the only one in the car many, many, many times. And it does feel nice. Yeah. And you know what? If you paid for that car full price, then <laughs> you have to maximize your car experience. So it really comes full circle and makes perfect sense. That's exactly <laughs> That's yeah. exactly right. You have found, you've given me a way to think positively about not being able to negotiate auto prices. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We love this. Okay. All right. This is kind of a fun one. So okay. let's do a little bit of myth busting because we're talking about, you know, we've been talking about good things, good ways to be. Have you heard anything, you know, out on Instagram or just as you do your research uh, for things for the magazines? Any terrible advice that you've seen circulating that you're like, no, that's bad. Don't say that. That's not helpful to people. Suck in your belly. Tighten your abs. I hate that. I hate that directive. I hate that mental um, trigger that we mm. all have as women and yeah. men too, probably, you know, and I'm guilty mm. as anyone because I, in a prior life, wrote diet books and they had, you know, and so I... I'm as, as guilty about feeding into diet culture as anything. But my point about the, the suck in your abs is mm -hmm. um, I've done a lot of reading and a little bit of practicing um, with breath work and mm -hmm. the breath. Um, and if you breathe correctly can be so healing, talk about a free way to give yourself joy and calm yourself down. Right. And I'm still working on it. But women in particular, even as I'm sitting in this chair, I am clenching my abs, right? Mm -hmm. And what you should be doing, the, we should all be breathing the way a baby breathes. If you watch a baby breathe, mm -hmm. its belly goes up and down. It's like nothing's tight. Air is coming in. The chest is going up, but also the belly. Yeah. We should be breathing as deeply into our belly as anything and letting it expand a little and, and not worrying about the silhouette that it's creating. So that would be one of um, maybe a little surprising sort of myth or, or tip that you hear all the time, stand yeah. up straight, hold in your belly. Um, see, check me out at the next cocktail party. See if I can really not suck in my belly. But, oh, you know, <laughs> I mean, if you I'm do, working. I guess, I don't know if I should high five you or remind you not <laughs> to or what it's hard work. I know exactly what you're talking about, especially you have, you know, those form fitting dresses. Exactly. Forget it. Exactly. That's, and, and, you know, and if, so if you're going to do that for the red carpet, fine. But for the rest of our lives, trying to give ourselves permission to let that muscle relax oh. and breathe into it. Uh, there's a gift to yourself. I love that. Oh, wonderful. Okay, Liz, we're going to jump into two very short, fun segments. Okay. Here we go. All right. So the first segment we're going to do is called this or that. So I will give you two options and I just want you to tell us which one you're more inclined toward. Okay. Ooh, I'm scared. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the first one is read a book or listen to a playlist. Read a book. I am who I am, or I'm always evolving. <sighs> oh. <laughs> oh, my. I, 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 my my gut went to I am who I am because mm -hmm. I'm really confident in who I am. I, I and but yet I'm also very self-critical. And so always trying to improve this, that, or the other thing. So, oh my goodness. I think, I think the editor me wanted to say, I am who I am and I love myself, <laughs> but I'm, I'm a project. I'm a project that is constantly in, in process. Gotcha. Well, maybe you are who you are, and that is a person who is always evolving. Well, that's like this. Right. Yes. That's it. You said it we'll, we'll give you a third option there. Okay. All right. The next one. Go on an adventure or stay in and relax? Oh, stay in and relax. I love the adventures. I go on safaris. Believe me, I love a good adventure. 
but I am an introvert and I love to just relax and read and be. I love quiet. Yes. Okay. Rewatch favorites or search for a new show? Search for a new show. Mm, okay. I'm not somebody who watches movies twice, even ones I loved. Yeah. Or, you know, I'll watch. No. Yeah. I, I, I go to a tried and true sitcom, for example, uh-huh. but I want a new episode. If I've yeah. seen it before, I have the urge to try something new. Awesome. Okay. All right. The more the merrier or more fun with fewer? More fun with fewer. Love a small group. <laughs> Here for humor or please be serious? Here for humor. Awesome. Okay. I And I do have to comment. If you are not following along with Liz on Instagram, and her handle will be in the show notes, you must do this. She mentioned she was recently on a safari, and she shared quite a bit about that. Liz, um, there was some sort of ape that you were particularly tuned in on. What was it? Was it gorillas? I I went to Rwanda, and I trekked up to see the mountain gorillas in the Virunga Mountains, which Uh are, you know, they're different from lowland gorillas. So um, we spent two days trekking up that mountain and seeing them. You get an hour at a time. So, yeah, that's in my highlights. Um, Oh, and it's saved. What's that? So it's saved. People can it's save. Yeah. It. So oh. the, like, look, there's lions. I have different ones in them. Highlights. <laughs> lions, giraffes. I love giraffes. Went to a place called Giraffe Manor. It was amazing where they like literally lick your face. Um, but my Instagram is really kind of like making fun of myself and my husband. Like I, you'd think that I would have this perfect house, but yet I have what I call hashtag clutter husband. Like he's neat and he's like amazing, but he never met a, a surface that he didn't want to cover with piles of things. Right. And I being this introvert, like in quiet, Mm -hmm. I, I'm so sorry to say this. I'm not a Halloween person. And he, little did I know, loves Halloween. We've been together 30 years. Until we had kids, I didn't know. Our entire house is filled with monsters. He puts out on November 1st this display that's in the state newspapers. Oh, wow. And on Halloween night, he has a a haunted house that he builds and fills with characters and smoke. And it's different every year for the kids on the street. Like, he's absolutely insane. And it, it triggers my introvert thing. And so I just, rather than, rather than just being like this for a month, uh-huh. I'm on Instagram, I'm just making fun of it constantly, how I'm like meditating. And there's this larger than life, like monster over me <laughs> in my house that I just painted. Totally. But you have to find your relief. And so just if it's your humor, humor, so be it. We love this. That's yeah. Fair. Liz, you shared more about this particular take on your husband's belongings in the September issue. And Gosh, that was really funny to read. <laughs> well, it's because it comes down to like, we're, we're different in that way, right? Mm-hmm. And first of all, like you said, find humor so that I can personally get through it. Yeah. But then also <laughs> really try to lean into the joy that he gives this neighborhood. Like the kids from up and down the street start in August asking him, what are his new monsters? Because the day after Halloween, he goes and buys all the sales. And so mm-hmm. he like, yeah. and well, he keeps it, adding. He keeps adding every <gasps> year. Every mm-hmm. year he keeps adding. You have no idea. It's it's enormous. And he loves it and he gets great joy out of it. So I try to reframe it in my head and the columns about reframing it and appreciating the fact that he leans into this hobby of his, right? The fact mm-hmm. that he's bringing joy to the neighborhood. The fact that um, he's, he's being sort of really real simple about how he organizes all of his Halloween, like our entire oh yeah driveway is filled with these huge toters and one is labeled monster heads and one is labeled, you know, hands and feet, d- disembodied hands and feet. Like it's all very, very organized. He takes the batteries out every, at the end of the season. Like, yeah. so in, in reality, it is real. so appreciating that about him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think sometimes people would think, okay, well, if you have in a partnership someone who's introverted and someone who's extroverted, there's going to be tension there. It's going to be problematic. But actually, like speaking from personal experience, I'm the introvert in our crew and my husband is the extrovert. But I'm always like, thank goodness he's around or I might never leave this room. That's exactly right. I mean, have you read Quiet, which is the book about introversion? Um, Oh, I want to give her credit where credit is due. I, oh, oh yes. 
Susan Cain. Susan Cain wrote the definitive book. It's about maybe 10 years old now. And it's, it's defining introversion. And it's talking about everything you just said. It's talking about how mm-hmm. she's married to an extrovert, um, how to complement the lifestyles, how it doesn't mean that you can't be public like we are. We're public facing people. You can't, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean you can't find the energy to be up and to do this oh. sort of thing. Um, it's just how we're wired. It's just how much energy. It's just that you need to, yeah. you need to have downtime. And they, she talks about presidents. Clinton, an extrovert, could go all day long, handshake and talk and talk and talk. And Obama, mm-hmm. an introvert. He needed every day. And if you read his memoir or Michelle's mm-hmm. I memoir, did. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. He Every day he needed two hours of absolute quiet time to mm-hmm. think and process and read. And so um, this helped me accept who I am to our earlier point. Beautiful. The quiet. book, Quiet. Yes. I'm adding it to the list. It sounds <laughs> like something I should read and probably my husband should read also. Yes. You know, just to edify the relationship. To understand it. It's <laughs> taken me 25 years of marriage to explain to Steve that this is how I'm wired. It's not just, I can't just get over it. Right. Yeah. And so. it's not about not liking people. It's not yeah. at all. Yeah. That's right. Like we have a block party on Saturday and Steve's like, okay, what's it going to be this year? Cause I've had a rough couple of weeks. And I was like, I don't know. I'm, I'm either going to stay inside and totally like not even go, or maybe I'll just go and like all day. Like, it just depends how I wake up that morning, you know? And yeah. Oh. Compelling. Man, it feels good to talk to someone who's on that same page. Yeah. And yeah. I, a lot of the mothers on the street are the same way. I've noticed as the black party has gone on year after year, um, you know, we all show up with our little casserole or whatever, mm-hmm. but you know, an hour or two in, most of the moms are back inside and the dads are out there grilling and, you know, and one other one, one extrovert mom hangs till the very end of the night. Well, great. I mean, yes. Hey, if there's mutual understanding there, what a beautiful thing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, Liz, we have yes. one more segment okay. and it's called Rapid Fire. Okay. So just some quick questions. All right. Oh, I'm ready. And so, I mean, gosh, the first one, you might already know what you want to share because we just talked about it, or maybe it's something more recent, but what is something that you have read lately? Oh, I do. I read so much. Um, read lately. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I, I literally read like five books in a week and I can't. Yeah, totally. This resonates for me a ton yeah. because I'm a, I'm a pretty avid reader as well. And when I get this question, I'm always like, uh, hold yeah. on, let me pull up my audible and my library yeah. e-reading yes. account for a I second. Do have, <laughs> I, do a, I do have a book. Um, I have, because I give them all away in my free little library, give them to staff members. Yeah, um, I'll I tell you that. two things. One book that is was all the talk is Anthony Doerr, Doerr's, D-O-E-R-R, his new book. He wrote um, All the Light We Cannot See. Oh, yeah. That was that big. So his new book, and I have, I have had enormous trouble getting through that. So I will tell you that I stopped at page 150, and I'm going to start later, but that was not an easy one. But the book that I loved and got so into is Mm -hmm. The Beasts Among Us. It's coming out in the next next couple of weeks. And I love a good, you know, set somewhere where I've never been, which in this case was South Korea, Mm -hmm. um, character-driven literary novel where you really get to know people and um, a new place and maybe learn some historic politics or all that. I really, that was very, very powerful. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So we'll have to look out for this one. Um, Okay. What's a favorite thing right now? Maybe a product, an app, or a tool, something that you've been using and loving that you'd recommend to a friend? Hmm. I would say Kosa um, uh, Tinted Facial Oil, K-O-S-A. Uh, Heather Muir suggested it for me. I didn't want like that big foundation yeah. um, that, you know, p- particularly during the pandemic, but I wanted a little bit of coverage and mm-hmm. a little bit of glow. And so that's what I would recommend. That sounds lovely. An oil. Yeah. It's a facial oil. Huh. Um, and I thought it would be too oily, but it's not. It's 
perfect actually. And I think my creative director uses it too, because we both Peloton. And so then we've got to cover up the red, right? We shower, oh, but we're oh, still yeah. red. And it's, it has nice coverage, but a little bit of glow. It's lovely. Oh, okay. All right. Now you're speaking my language and okay. probably for anyone who's listening too, because we all know what that feels like. Yes. We're, tra you know, we're trying to be awesome and fit in our workouts, but <laughs> there is this period of redness that is very real. Yes. <laughs> so we need this, the COSA. Let's get it. Okay. Okay. I'll give you the link. I hope I'm not mispronouncing it, but I'll send you the link. Okay. What is something people would be surprised to learn about you? Hmm, my life is really an open book. Thanks to Instagram. Um, it would probably be the extent to which I'm self critical and the, the extent to which I can get stuck in negative self talk, because I talk a good game about how other people should, th you know, be positive and all of this. But mm -hmm. I'm the first person to ruminate over um Oh, did I talk to everybody I should have at that cocktail party? Mm -hmm. um, did yeah. I resting face when I was on that Zoom? Um, yeah. did, was I was I listening intently enough when my child was telling me that story? Like I constantly mm -hmm. like doing that. Um, so the self criticism. Oh, yeah, man, I feel that we all I have. Do. We all have it. At least I let my belly out now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yes. If you wonder back now, did I let my belly out? Yeah. Box did check. I look at like, I've just given up all of it. Did I look, did my belly look big in that photo or in that meeting or forget it. Forget it. I don't care. Oh goodness. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes we tune in on these things about ourselves that we wonder like who noticed and I think there's one person probably almost every time, and it's just us. That's <laughs> us. Yeah. It's so true. Nobody was paying the attention to you that you wish that they were. Right? No, because we're all worried about our own appearance and how and you know what we said or didn't say. And mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Finish this sentence. Love You'll me. never see me. You'll never see me in jeans. Oh. What? I feel so uncomfortable in blue jeans and haven't worn them in, or even black jeans in maybe 20 years. Is it the feeling of denim? Yes. What is what the feeling of denim? It's, it's, I know my body shape, right? And I know what's, what feels comfortable, what I can move in and mm -hmm. what's flattering. I've got like, I, I've got a, an hourglass situation happening. I mean, it's not an hourglass, but it's an hourglass, right? Um, <laughs> there are curves, right? There are curves and jeans just make me, I feel in jeans as if I'm a stuffed sausage. It's the same thing as when I went to buy my wedding gown, however, many years ago, I thought I'd want that, that, that mermaid silhouetted thing. And mm. it looked fabulous and I loved it, but on me, no, 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 no. I, I, it just wasn't the dress for me. So I wound up getting like tight bodice and like just a tool skirt. So I'm a dress person. I'm a yoga pants person. I'm a wide legged pants person. Um, but you're never going to see me a pair of jeans. Interesting. Well, wide legs are certainly having a moment right now. Thank God. <laughs> it's, it's a fun shape. Right. And I'm with you. And you know what? That wedding dress story, I hear you. Because like we what you think, what you think you want. Versus oh, what is your dress? Absolutely. Because all of the examples we see as we're pouring through, you know, wedding magazines and whatever, like the imagery that's out there, right. there is this particular spelt, long, right. lean body type. And so right. we're comparing the type, the styles on this kind of similar body type, or at least it used to be that case. Like for me, yeah. I was married a decade ago. I think now people have the advantage of seeing all sorts of clothing on all sorts of bodies, which is a wonderful thing, but right. For some point in time, that was not the case. And so we would think to ourselves, oh, yes, I wanted this like Grecian gown look. Ooh, ooh. And I thought, oh, yeah, this is going to be it. But I'm 5'4 and I'm pretty curvy, too. And it was not it. And it I went with. It. <laughs> yeah. And you, when you go with when you put it, it's like say yes to the dress. Like, you yeah. know it when you put it on. Yeah. You know it. Yeah. Even before you look in the mirror, you know it. How does it feel? Like I just put this dress on and it felt like I could be happy all day long on the happiest day of my life in this dress. Oh, that's the feeling. That's it. Absolutely. 
Okay, last question for you. Oh no, I don't want this to end. It's so fun. I know, but we're I think we're like one minute over. Okay, so I want to like the story of my life. I'm always five minutes late to everything. So oh my goodness. Okay, all right. So <laughs> When you need to get focused, whether it's for, you know, drilling down on some awesome exercise or um, getting going with a work project, do you have any amp song or triggering thing that you do to get in the zone? Well, I do a lot of TV or, um, you know, Today Show, Good Morning America, mm -hmm. made presentations, that kind of thing, speaking to ballrooms of people. Before I do that, I always go into the bathroom, look in the mirror and say... You're prepared, you're smart, and you're gonna kill this. And I and then I walk out and do it. So that's like my thing. Ugh. And it used to be, I used to have like like rap my my at bat music used to be kid rock, but then he showed up in Rolling Stone with like a dead cougar around his neck and I oh. couldn't yeah, I can't I can't go with that. So so I'm off kid yeah. rock. <laughs> Like very Cruella Deville. Yeah, I was like, oh man, oh, you just gave me like the biggest reason to just never, just to just be over you. So yeah, yeah like yeah, that, that, that's that's self talk in the mirror. Those are my things. You you're smart, you're prepared, and you're gonna kill it. Ah, oh, so fun. Okay, I might have to adapt. But then you have too. to be prepared. You have to have been prepared. If you're not prepared, you can't say that. Oh yeah, because that critic is going to be like, no, 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 you're not prepared. You're going to fail, right? But if you know you're going to give yourself that speech, all the more reason to get prepared, right? Because you're like, That's I right. need to believe myself tomorrow when I give myself the speech. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's all about that preparation. And that's what I love about your whole thing. It's like, yeah, you can do it, but you, but you got to put in the work. Like I've been yeah. on this, I've been on morning television a hundred times, right? I still, there's no script, but I still practice what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. And I practice, it comes out of my mouth. I just don't read it. I stand there and I pretend I'm on set like at least 20 times the night before. Yeah, like, my, my husband's like, really, you still it's really just how to make jello. And I'm like, I know, but I want it to come out of my mouth smoothly. I want to have that mind memory so that even if I am distracted by Al Roker making a joke, it still <laughs> comes out well. Yeah. So prepare. That's that's been the secret. Liz, so many wonderful takeaways today. Thank you so much for your time. This has been such a treat. It's a blast. I'm when next time I get up your way, we're gonna we're gonna get together. Oh man, and I'll be coming downstate. I need to be in New York. I have to make a trip down there. I'll keep you posted when yes. I do. Please do. We'll be back in the office pretty much three days a week starting in like mid-November. So awesome. Make All right. Happen. Well, have a great rest of your week and I'll talk to you Thank soon. You. Bye, Kate. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Wow, Liz Vaccarillo, everyone. That was incredibly fun. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed your time with us today, please share this episode with a friend, then subscribe, follow, leave a comment, or give a five-star review. Season one of the show will include more chats with top authors, experts, and influential personalities. We will be serving up simplified applied psychology, habit theory, and quality of life tips and tricks that you can put into action right away. Until next week, I'm Kate Hammer, and you know how to live.